Good morning, YouTube. All right, apples are in, so that means it's time for some baking. Let's make some old-fashioned apple turnovers, yeah? We're gonna shortcut this one and cheat a little bit, but we're gonna have incredible old-fashioned flavor. You're gonna like this one. All right, let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. We're gonna start our filling first. Now, I've got two kinds of apples. I've got Granny Smith, which you can find all the time, all year round, no problem. This is your kind of quintessential American baking apple, except I think it was developed in Australia. Did I make that up? I may have. And I've got a sticker. Ah, I'll get that off in a minute. This, however, you only see in the fall. This is actually my favorite apple to cook with. This is a Macintosh. I like Johnna Golds, which I haven't seen this year. I like Macintosh. I think these make the best pies. And all we're doing at this point is we're going to peel these guys and cut them into chunks. And they're going to go into our pot right here. And so when we've got a mess of apples cut, actually I'm going to do four. Um, when I've got these four done, I'll show you how to spice them up. All right, so we've got our apples. These are chopped up. And these are only gonna get a couple things. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, about half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and I'm gonna give this a little bit of fresh nutmeg, which I absolutely adore. Nope, that's filet gumbo. Okay, <laughs> hang on, I gotta find the nutmeg. Man, where's the freaking nutmeg? It needs to be really hard and fast. What they call a rolling boil. Where is the freaking? It looks like little guys are just like. Custom about nutmeg, and I was still recording. All right, here we go. I found the nutmeg. Obviously, I need to edit some stuff out since that just kept going. All right, we're going to do a good half teaspoon of nutmeg and do it freshly grated. Now, I'll say this you can use any spices that you like for fall baking. You know, you can use allspice, you can use cloves, um, nutmeg, uh, those are my favorites. But I like to keep this pretty simple. I like a nice, clean, clear apple flavor. And this is gonna go on the stove with this. Four tablespoons of butter. And I'm just gonna let these cook for about 20 minutes until our apples are nice and soft. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I know I wasn't thinking about something. <laughs> you put your apples on the stove, one cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Now you can stir it around. Look at those apples, I was thinking, those don't look right. It's <laughs> because they weren't. <laughs> Our apples, about 10 or 15 minutes. Wow, I'm really crooked. About 10 or 15 minutes. They still have a, a good bit of body to them. So they're cooked, but I didn't cook them to death. We're gonna do one last thing. Oh, I didn't turn that off too soon. Okay, we're gonna do one last thing. Cornstarch. Little bit of water. You don't need much. But you do want something that will help pull that filling together while these are in the oven. So, two teaspoons. We want to get nice and thick. Our apples, thank you, Joey, release a good bit of liquid. All right, stir, 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 stir. Okay, so you get nice and thick. You hang on to that. 
Can you see how that thickened up? Let me. That's really thick. It, yeah, it got nice and thick. Okay. All right, so we're going to set this aside. All right, here's this stuff. Best stuff on the planet. Now, you all know that I love homemade and from scratch, but there's some times where it's just not worth the effort. Um, actually, there's a whole book on just exactly that thought, which is called, what's the name of that book? Make the, be make the bread and buy the butter. Buy, buy the butter, make the bread. Make the bread and buy the butter. Sure, that. Yeah, that's what it's called. Anyway, it's about when is it worth putting time and effort into making something from scratch, and when is it just a fussy pain in the tuchus? All right, puff pastry. You buy it, it comes frozen, you let it defrost, you unfold it, and it makes magic. And this is just one sheet of puff pastry that has defrosted. And you just cut it into squares, just like that. And each of these squares is one of our turnovers. So we pick up our apples. Ooh, that's hot. These are still hot. And then we're gonna fill these. You want them nice and full, but not to the point where they're gonna pop. But that's also why we cooked the apples before we put them in the pastry, because that lets us know how much liquid they're gonna release. You never quite know about your apples. So you just fold these in half and mash your edges. See, just like that. And we're gonna repeat that. I have like one piece of apple too much, so let me put that back. Here we go. Ta-da, a turnover. All right, this is gonna go on our baking sheet and I've got our oven preheating to 400 degrees. So let me fill the rest of these. We're gonna pop those in the oven. Boom, just like that. All right, I have to move kind of fast because Bladen is already in here, parked right here waiting <laughs> for a turnover. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, Bladen, is this is a cup and a half of powdered sugar, okay? We're gonna set a little bit aside, so a couple tablespoons. And you can do a glaze with anything. You can use water, you can use milk, you can use half and half, you can use cream. And in this case, when I was picking out apples, I found this Macintosh apple juice. It's expensive, but I thought, how perfect. Can you drink it? Sure, you can drink it, but we're not gonna drink it. We're drizzling a couple tablespoons into our powdered sugar. Would you put that down, please? Is it good? Is it very apple -y? Yeah, sure. Sure, very Actually, apple -y. Uh, I drink this like flavored water. Uh huh. And it, like instead of it being apple flavored, it just tasted like you were eating, drinking an apple. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I think it would be good. All right, so we're just mixing up our powdered sugar and apple juice. Now you can do that with um, if you don't have that brand, which I have no idea where you. I don't know where they sell that, but you can use a good apple cider. All right. So these took 25 minutes in a 400 degree oven. Woo! <laughs> da da! Da da! Are you gonna do a cross section? I don't know. Are you gonna let me? Yeah. <laughs> There's some more turnovers. And then we just drizzle. I like doing it while they're still warm. You want more drizzle than that, don't you? Yes. Here's your, can I do the cross section? Would you like to? Yeah. All right. I saw this on Benching with Babish. 
He always does cross sections. Shout out to a, another YouTuber, huh? All right, so <clears throat> there are our apple turnovers. There we go. Wow. Do I pass? Wow, wait. There you go. Wait, look, wait for it to focus. Look <laughs> at that, and I'm going to eat it. This one's better. No. That one's better. They taste the same. It's okay. All right, tell me, take a bite and tell me how I did. Huh. Did you burn your mouth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> how is it? Well, I tasted some flake, and the flake is good. It is good. What about the filling? I can't taste it. It's hot. Take another bite, goofball. How'd uh, I do? Uh, really good. <laughs> Talking about food good enough to burn your mouth over? That's how you make apple turnovers. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. And if you thought that video was helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. And if you have a second, hop on over to Patreon and check out how to support my channel even more. Again, thanks for watching. <laughs>